Hey guys, it's Richard the Aficionado channel and Reefapalooza. How are you guys doing today? Today we're in the second day of Reefapalooza Orlando 2018 and I'm in the other building with my friend Josh here and he has a very interesting product that I think you guys should know about. Tell me about your scrubbers. These are algae turf scrubbers. They are designed uh, to be the nutrient export and take the place of your refugium on your tank. Gotcha. And how does this work? This works by taking your tank water mm -hmm. and filtering it through the box here down a screen. Mm -hmm. It grows turf algae on here to remove your nitrates, phosphates, mm -hmm. ammonias, and heavy metals out of your water. God, why should anyone try this unit? They should try these because they are far more efficient mm -hmm. than a macroalgae at removing mm -hmm. the nutrients from your water, uh, more at, than Chato or Calerpa or some other macro that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's a smaller compact yeah. unit, so it right. takes the place of your refugium, mm -hmm. and it's a lot less maintenance than you would get from a normal uh, refugium that you have to use. This will be, you know, like very effective using it side by side with the protein skimmer where it pulls out the inorganics the, and then the, this, other, this will pull out the rest. Correct, correct. The, the protein skimmers are designed to remove the dissolved solids. Okay. This is going to remove any of your dissolved solids that break down further. That's where, your, that's where your nitrogen cycle starts is when they break down further. Gotcha. This removes it. So, so basically having this unit and I would use essentially less GFO. Less You'll use less GFO, less bio pellets, less carbon. Yeah, actually, you need to probably remove them because this is this is going to take the place of all three. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then because it is an export removal, um, I guess then I could use uh, less water changes. Yes, you, that's that's the upside is is you'll have less water changes. Mm -hmm. But if you are running a mixed reef system, you will need to dose back in your elements that your corals are consuming, just as you would if you have an established reef tank. I read before on somewhere that if you have like a like let's say a chain of morpha reactors and stuff like that, you would need to dose back iron. Is the same case, uh, same, is it the same thing over here? You might. Um, these do use iron. That's what gives the turf algae its green color. Mm -hmm. um, if you do see a significant um, reduction in growth on the screen mm -hmm. um, from where it was before, yeah. and now your nutrient levels are rising and nothing else in the tank has changed your feeding schedules, livestock, bio load, anything like that, it's probably because your uh, iron is low. But if you're dosing back in your trace elements, you should be, iron should be part of that, so. Gotcha. Now, one thing that really caught my eyes while, while I was walking by yesterday was the, the color of your lights. It's very, I mean, because I'm not new to algae scrubber. I've been using them mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Um, tell me, how, how's, it looks like this is different. It looks like you told me before that you have partnered with S SB Reef Light. Tell me about these lights. Yes, uh, the, our lights are specifically designed to grow turf algae. Uh, turf algae is a flowering plant, so it likes more of the red spectrum. It needs a little bit of the blue to break it up. Um, our lights have um, 660 and 640 red and 450 and 420 blues in them. So that is specifically designed to grow the hair algae efficiently and the best. Wow, okay, that's impressive. I like the research that went behind this. Yeah, and my, Mike at SB Reef Lights, he's the one who designed the lights. He's the lighting guy on that. We were using a previous supplier. Mm -hmm. um, they had 640 red and just 420 blue, mm -hmm. or 450 blue, sorry. They didn't even put the 420 in it. 420 is more of the violet. Um, but yeah. when we partnered with Mike, we get a better light, better quality light. Yeah and uh, you're, you're gonna see some improved growth on your scrubbers. Richard, you asked me, well, you know, some people refer to um, algae in a, in a turf scrubber or whether it's in a refugium that some algae might release toxins into the water. And um, I said, yeah, you know, that's why, you know, they don't work and if you don't change your water, everything's just gonna crash. That's it. No. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you just play that and watch everybody in the uh, refugium and turf scrubber business go, damn you! <laughs> no. Um, as you know, looking at these aquariums, I, I use uh, algae to filter my aquariums to quite an extent. Um, and so if algae release toxins, I'd be concerned about it. Well, the truth is they do. 
Um, they, they leach substances that are called leachates and uh, certain algae like calerpa, if, if you've got a, a rhizome of calerpa grow across a coral, you can see the coral tissue will be damaged. Um, any creature, whether it's a sponge, a coral, a any creature living on the reef, they emit substances into the water that are harmful to their neighbors because it's a battle for territory. And algae are no exception. They're, they're releasing stuff in the water. Bacteria release stuff into the water. Um, so um, as we were just talking about, uh, a lot of the substances that are released by uh, algae we refer to as DOC, dissolved organic carbon. They may be simple sugars. Um, they may be more complex uh, organic substances. And there is a researcher, his name is uh, Forrest Rower, and he's out in San Diego. He is a world famous guy studying uh, microbialization in the seas and on coral reefs. Uh, he's looked at uh, microbes, bacteria, and viruses that can be found on reefs. And what he found was that on reefs where algae are um, in high uh, stock, a large standing stock of algae where the shift is more towards algae uh, instead of corals, uh, that is a uh, cascading effect because as the algae become dominant, they release DOC and you can measure it in the water. He's been able to just say, if we've got this organic carbon in the water, then we will find certain microbes and the corals will get disease and they will die. And it's tied to algae and organics. And hearing this or reading reports that he's written on it, you might go, well, wait a second. But I keep and grow corals in an aquarium and I'm using algae as an algae filter and the corals are thriving. That's a contradiction. Or maybe you, you, you have a reef aquarium and you've been carbon dosing, whether you're adding vinegar or you're adding uh, glucose uh, or methanol or you know any of these organic substances that people add uh, to control nutrient levels and the corals are thriving. They're not uh, going downhill. Well. I don't mean to discredit what Forrest Rower is talking about. I, what I'm trying to say here is that it's much more complex than a black and white issue to say algae are bad or dissolved organic carbon is bad. Um, it really gets down to um, what is actually happening. There is a lot to be studied and I think the contradiction uh, is the kind of thing that any scientist like myself uh, would look at and say, wow, um, this requires more study to really understand what is the process that Forrest has discovered and, and illuminated on the reef, what, what makes that work that way, and why isn't the same process happening in our closed system aquariums. Uh, so it would be neat if, if he could be um, introduced to the aquarium hobby and understand what it is that we're doing and, and tie that to his own research. Maybe we'll touch upon that in a uh, future edition, a future video when we talk about algal turf filtration. I think it's a, a wonderful way to control nutrients in the aquarium, also a way to basically modify the respiration effects that happen because we have a basically a closed system, a small volume of water and a large volume of life. Um, you can utilize the uh, process that Walter Aidey described um, in his book Dynamic Aquaria, uh, what's called reverse daylight photosynthesis to elevate pH and soak up the CO2 that accumulates at night due to respiration, also supply excess oxygen at night when it would otherwise be uh, depleted by the, all of the life in such a small body of water. And only algal filtration has that capacity. Sure, you can use Kalkwasser to elevate pH, but it doesn't do anything to your oxygen levels. Um, algal filtration, whether it's in a refugium or in a turf filter, uh, nighttime illumination covers all of those benefits, uh, including the nutrient control. 
so yes, I, I think algal filtration is, is great, wonderful thing. Well guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the segment. Um, I hope you guys learned something new and I hope you guys try this uh, method out um, if you're having a um, hard time, you know, like controlling your nutri nutrients and etc. Um, and just give this a go. Alright guys, have a great day. You fool! <laughs> you done it. Yeah. So anyway, so what am I talking about now? The the, the scrubbing again. Oh, uh, we, we just you want me to about. bring that up again? Now you've turned on the microphone. You think I can say what I said already? Like I'm a you know a machine. <laughs> <laughs>